Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Young Dad Gaming Reviews, the series where I recount, review, and reminisce the games that I grew up on, as well as decide when or if my son will be growing up on the same games, and which one should be avoided for now due to extreme violence, suggestive themes, and or because the game just sucks. Next up, as promised, Tomb Raider 3. Released in 1998, Tomb Raider 3, The Adventures of Laura Croft, continues the, the, the adventures of Laura Croft. With an upgraded Tomb Raider engine, better dynamic lighting, more of a focus on puzzle solving like the first game, and better combat than the second game, how does Tomb Raider 3 compare to its two predecessors? We'll get your tails on a pony, get your booty shorts on, and let's go raid some tombs. We begin Laura's next adventure in India, as Laura hunts down an ancient artifact, big surprise there, called the Infata Stone. Once finding this artifact, she meets Dr. Willard, who explains that there are three other stones similar to it, all possessing supernatural powers. Supernatural? No, supernatural. That's like a whole other level above super. The other stones are scattered across the world, one in the Pacific Islands, one inside Area 51, and the other in London. In the Pacific Islands, Laura stumbles upon a crashed military plane where she assists the survivors and saves them from dinosaurs and cannibals, eventually leading her to the leader of the cannibals, their deity, known as Puna. Using the crystal, he shoots green lightning at her, but eventually falls to her twin pistols. In Area 51, Laura finds the crystal inside of a working UFO and even finds an alien. Hey, are you, are you serious? Laura? You're not even going to act surprised at this? Like, at all? Okay. In London, Laura finds a group of disfigured people living in the sewers who claim to have immortality, a side effect from being test subjects for a Miss Sophia Lay, a cosmetics company CEO. She's trying to make products that give eternal youth and immortality, and if any of this is sounding familiar, yes, it's the same exact plot to Catwoman. Comes home. Tell him I know all about Bioline. It's disease in a jar. Once dealing with Sophia, finally having all four stones, Laura heads to Antarctica to meet with Dr. Willard, but while she's there, she realizes the good doctor has been doing some experiments of his own on his own crew. Now, I have to point out, this whole first Antarctica level is probably my absolute favorite, as it feels very much like John Carpenter's The Thing. Sled dogs, burned down buildings, half-mutated scientists, and even flamethrower-wielding dudes. Laura confronts Willard, who tells her he's going to continue these experiments, which he considers rapid evolution, and send it upon the whole world. Your typical bad guy taking over the world shtick. From here, he steals the crystals from Laura and runs off to the site of a meteorite crash where this whole adventure actually got started. When Laura catches up to him, he explains, in very hard to hear dialogue God knows what, before he throws himself into the pit and comes out as a spider dude. Laura fights him and escapes via helicopter. The end. Normally, I don't cover the whole story in my reviews, but this one I felt necessary, as I've begun to realize many of the Tomb Raider stories are entertaining, but definitely not the reason to play the games. The real reason, and what I keep finding out the more I play through the series, is each location and the grand scale of them. That brings me to our next segment. Sporting another flashy upgrade from the previous game such as smoother and quicker movements from Lara, as well as a few new moves such as crawling, and even a useful sprint mechanic. Lara also has a new arsenal at her disposal with an updated sound for each gun, giving it more of an impactful feeling and a bit more gore than the previous games, giving you a satisfying conclusion to each fight. My biggest gripe in Tomb Raider 2, as much as I enjoyed that game, was the unfairness with the enemies and how much damage they deal, and how much damage they can take. Tomb Raider 3 fixes all of that. Human enemies aren't as abundant, but when they do show up, it doesn't take 100 Uzi bullets to put them down. Also, they don't look like terrifying jerky men anymore. Now, depending on what enemy you're fighting, two shots from the shotgun or newly implemented Desert Eagle is enough to put them down for good. Usually. 
A cool feature in this game, once you take down an enemy, if you're standing in front of them as they lay dying, they might have a second wind, lift their heads up to get one final shot on you before collapsing. It's really not that annoying, and I didn't even notice that they did this until the tail end of the game. Apart from Lara's new Desert Eagle, she gets her familiar shotgun, now designed to look more like a Spaz-12, her Uzis, an MP5 replacing the M16, the harpoon gun makes a return, as well as a grenade launcher and rocket launcher. Amazingly, this woman who probably weighs like 120 soaking wet can carry all this in her backpack. Ammo is rather sparse for these weapons this time around. Luckily, as I mentioned before, enemies aren't as bullet spongy. There are even some points where as long as you don't attack them, some of the enemies will actually be passive and sometimes even help Laura. Tomb Raider 3 introduces a new way to experience the levels in the order that you prefer. After the introductory India level, you are free to choose between the next three locations. This is a great way to play the way you want for strategic and entertaining ways. Though I do have a serious grip about this. If you play through the London and Pacific Islands first and collect weapons and health kits, then play the Nevada stages, Laura eventually gets captured and all of her items get taken and you do not get them back. You have to recollect everything again. Not only that, if this is the third location you chose, you will enter the final Antarctica area with almost no weapons or supplies. So it's best to play that area first and then move on. Luckily, I played the Nevada stages after the Pacific Islands, so it wasn't too painful for me. My least favorite stage might actually be the London stages. They're just so drawn out and kind of repetitive, as well as dark. While sporting the new dynamic lighting, some locations are just too damn dark and difficult to see. Luckily, Laura has an integrated flare button instead of having to open your menu to select them. This game, while still being very challenging and taking me 20 hours to beat, two more than Tomb Raider 2, I found it much easier and I saved much less, totaling up to only around 400 saves. Even still, this game has many hazards, and new ones at that. From venomous enemies and poisonous darts, water hazards like I'm a piranha, they're in the Amazon. To the ever deadly quicksand. Remember the days when we were kids and how it felt like quicksand was going to be a more common issue? Yeah, I blame it on games and movies from the late 90s. Once again, vehicles make a return, and they're... Okay, I guess. Except for the canoe. Oh my god. I hated this thing. I hated this whole level. And finally, one big issue I dealt with throughout the game was the camera. I don't know what it was in this one, but I was constantly fighting the camera as it kept trying to show off Laura, and not the jump I was trying to make. I get it, okay? Laura looks good. Speaking of looking good... Again, the developers learned from their strengths and made Tomb Raider 3 an absolute joy to look at. Each location is so vastly different from the last, and this made every level a reward to get to. The India stages are very reminiscent of Tomb Raider 1, which is a nice callback. The Pacific Islands have white sandy beaches and sky blue waters, as well as lush jungles and rushing rivers. The Nevada areas are steep and bright canyons, while the London areas are dark and rainy. No surprise there. Joking aside, they feel mysterious and engaging despite the long runtimes. Antarctica, as I mentioned earlier, is my favorite as it feels very similar to John Carpenter's The Thing, which is my favorite horror movie. Laura looks relatively the same as she did in the last game, but with new outfits for Barbie Laura, such as a different color outfit, which if I'm not mistaken, was actually her original design before they settled on green and brown. Camel pants and a tank top in the desert, a cat burglar-esque outfit in London, and finally, a winter jacket and long pants for Antarctica. Laura, finally, you dress warmly for the snow. The enemy designs definitely got the best upgrades. As I mentioned earlier, the enemies no longer look like Hellraiser rejects, but instead like actual people. Enemies range from rabid animals like the first game, to human enemies, eventually to deformed mutants, beastly mutants, and finally meteorite energy powered wasps and guardians. The coolest enemy in the game has to be the Stone Guardians you fight in India. I think this is where the film got the idea for Lara's fight with the giant Shiva statue, which is still badass, and why I think the film was a great adaptation, but we're not ready to have that discussion. 
Yeah. Even through 20 hours of gameplay, Tomb Raider 3 keeps introducing new and varied enemies, thus always keeping the fun fresh and tension high, as you don't always know what to expect when you turn that next corner. Again, much like its predecessors, the music in Tomb Raider is a gorgeous orchestral adventure. Each soundtrack is varied between each location and can sometimes get downright creepy. The absolute best in this game is the remixed rendition of the Tomb Raider theme. There is a lot of scripted dialogue in this game, but each character usually has some interesting things to say. The weapons also got an update to their sound effects, giving them a bit more oomph. Enemies are a bit more vocal, and much like Doom, now help you distinguish what dangers you might be facing ahead. With all these updates and fixes to the more annoying aspects of the Tomb Raider series, how does this game hold up? To be fair, I think I needed a walkthrough for this game more than the first two combined, but I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. The puzzles were immensely different from each other, with clever solutions to each of them, such as a puzzle with fiery platforms, with the solution hidden on the ceiling, but with a clever twist, making Laura have to use one of her flares to illuminate which pillars are safe to stand on. These ideas blew me away and showed that the developers really put faith into their fanbase and didn't treat them like idiots. Out of all the Tomb Raider games I've played so far, I'd have to say this one was my absolute favorite and I'd gladly go back through it again. Overall, I give Tomb Raider 3 5 weird thing things out of 5, a perfect score. This is the definitive Tomb Raider experience with its clever puzzles, interesting enemies, beautiful and diverse set pieces, and an amazing soundtrack to tie it all together. This is the peak of the Tomb Raider series, and I don't think anything could top what they brought to the table here. As for games I would let my son play, much like the first two, I'd have to give this one a few years. For nostalgia value, I'd have to give this four sacred crystals out of five, as this was the first Tomb Raider I remember beating, albeit with a few cheat codes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below for games you'd like to see on this channel, or your thoughts on the Tomb Raider series. Hit that subscribe button as it always helps me out, and ring that bell if you'd like to be notified. Also, don't forget to check out Ellie's channel in the description below for more amazing music covers. Our next video might be a little familiar to some of you, but until then, I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite YouTube channel on the Citadel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the other side. Bye bye. Friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. You got a friend in me.